<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and welcome to my studio today. How's everybody doing? It's a nice day, actually. It's nice and warm. It's about 70, I guess. Nice fall day. Hi, Eileen. So how are you doing? I got half my <laughs> space cleaned up. Hey, Lena. So just thought I'd show what we did last Friday. Still a little... <laughs> Eileen, <laughs> I hope I didn't shock you. <laughs> you took out those papers. I thought about it after I mailed it, and I thought, ah, what the heck? <laughs> uh, thanks, Lena. Hey, Jane. Gina. Did it, shock, did it surprise you or, or <laughs> does nothing surprise you? Uh, Colleen got hers and <laughs> she said she laughed her head off. I thought that was, I thought, what the heck? <laughs> so I probably thought you had to get the exterminator in. <laughs> well, you know, you got some coming your way, too. <laughs> hey, Colleen. <laughs> Hey, Kimberly. <laughs> yeah, so I am so behind on my folders. <laughs> that was the one we did a while back, but I haven't done anything inside. And that was from the Friday class. And you can change this up to whatever. Um, this was what um, I based it off of, but where did I put it? But this is where it originally got the idea when Colleen, the scrap chick, she's in chat right now. Um, this is the the Moon and Me by them. Kai Kyrobella is it? Yeah, I got this today. I got two packs because hey. They don't put them on individuals. They're, they use both sides. And what if you like the other side? <laughs> so I thought I'd show you what this is. I got two other different packs also, and they're awesome too. I do like their paper. And um, I know when we were first looking at this, we were trying to figure out who the artist was, and we could never find the artist. Um, but when I was on Pinterest, I did see a lot of different segments of, of this pack that other art, different artists have all done. So I did see the flying um, origami birds, and I did see this. 
rope around a moon. It didn't have this. So what they've done, whoever it was, and th this is what I like to do too, is you take bits and pieces of different things that you like and you put them in together to do your own thing. Um, so this is a really nice sky scene. And I saw this one too, the fish in the balloons. And I also saw one with fish in a light bulb. Hey, Joan. So, you know, you think of think outside the box when you're trying to think up stuff for your own. So naturally you wouldn't see fish in a balloon floating. Um, same with the umbrella with the fish in it. Um, you could, you could do butterflies in a balloon. You could do um, fish flying. You can, well, there's anything really. Think of things that you'd never see a fish in and then draw it. Flying dolphins in the sky. Little cat in a bird cage. Those are the different moons, different sayings. It's a nice moon picture. You could use this and cut out sections for a moon. If you didn't want to paint it, take um, little sections of this and you could use this. Yeah, it's an excellent jump off point for, now see here they have the little fish in an umbrella upside down. And I think these little um, fireflies are little light bulbs. So, you know, just try and think outside the box to get some ideas. Uh, this reminds me a lot of what Dee Dee does. So the cosmic sky, the door and the watch, that type of thing. So this can be made up in multiple different ways. Um, this, the clouds for the trees were another one I saw on Pinterest. So they've used different jumping off points. Uh, this is a very common one you see, the ladder to the moon. Yeah, it's a beautiful pack. There's the one that Colleen really liked. So when she saw this, this was the original plan. I really like this one very easily. There's the little fireflies in the light bulbs. That's cute. I've seen this done quite a few times with the little boats in the water. And there's the clouds. I love this one. I think that's so cool. Beautiful sky. You could use this and paint on top of it. I love this one too. So you have the earth or the kind of upside down basically is what they've done. So when you get stuff like this, that you really love really study it because if you really look at it, there's a lot of things here that's quite easy to do. There's simple brush marks brush strokes, even using other types of things um, like uh, foil, painting with foil, painting with Q-tips, painting with 
um, a Brillo pad, that type of thing. There's so many different strokes you can get that look like something. Like, they look like a texture. So that is that one. Then I got, I love this one. It's the, um, Lena, you were talking about um, the Aurora ball, bear, Aurora ballus, I guess you call it. Um, oh, there it is. This, so you probably like this one. It's very cute. I love snowmen. I think I need that Packer Pet. We'll tweet a pic of a canvas that I got from Nikki that will go great with this paper. Some great paper. Oh, please. Yeah, tweet it so I can see it. So you can do multiple different stuff. That's cute. I like just the snowflakes in the sky. So, you know, it doesn't have to be all realistic. It can, you can have stuff like this. This is cute. I want to do some snowman um, paintings. I, I haven't seen the Aurora on um, this type of painting. You don't see it too often in a, in a painting. Wait. Not yet. A little snowman walking his dog. <laughs> he is the, the I think the biggest um, hurdle to get over is getting ideas. So really brainstorming um, different ideas. That, so you, a good example was that um, the moon in me. So you see different, different parts of different paintings that you, that you're really attracted to. So you take those and you put them in a scene of your own. Yeah, the pink in the in the uh, top of the aurora. Yeah, I've only seen green, but maybe there is pink. I don't know. That's cute too. So this would be a cute idea of doing, um, thinking of something people would do in the winter time. Maybe they're shoveling. Maybe they're just skiing or something, or like this, just walking. And you make snowmen instead of people. You get the little circles that you can add. You get some um, textured. Like for me, I'm not a scrapbooker, but I would probably paint something on this here and use it as a frame. That's cute. Little stamps. There's all the snowman. So you could actually cut these guys out if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, aren't they cute? Yeah, I know they do. Unfortunately, it costs me. <laughs> There's a, the Aurora. So it's not showing as bright as it is. Maybe I'll turn my light off. Better? It's a little bit better. 
their night scene. Isn't that cute? So you've done the glow on the snowman. And then you could use this for little sentimental things on your bottom of your, your journal or cards, whatever. That's cute, little farmer one. That's that one. That was Northern Lights, it's called. Knocked my papers down. And then I got this one. I like this one. It's not as nice as the others, but there's stuff I can use in it. I do love roses. This is more mm, Victorian, or I guess you could call it. It's pretty. More winter scenes. Oh, cool. Oh, is that the, um, so it's kind of a, was that those canvases that you were talking about? The small canvases that were, um, cloth canvas or something? Hey, Kathy. Yeah, I've seen see I've seen that one too on Pinterest. Oh, it's a napkin. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can um I've seen them I've seen the artist that did that one on Pinterest. So, you know, there you go. Your people are getting ideas and using them. It's a nice crackle one. Roses. So you can get ideas off your scrapbook paper to make your own. So you, you see how the layering is applied. And you can make your own by, now I'm not saying do the exact same thing, but you know that um, a two-toned white and kind of a gray with a stencil would work. You could use washi tape or other um, papers, and then you put a crackle on it. You make your own. Like These look like photographs here. So you could take photographs and white out areas, put them together and white them out. Black and white photographs. Put a glaze of, this is kind of a soft green over top. There's, it just gives you ideas. This here, snowflake bird, pine cone, you know, there you go, you've got a card. They are, they're gorgeous. You know, and it's not like it used to be, like so many, most of this gets done on Photoshop. So it's easier to lay things on top and try things out. So these could be all cut out and crackle piece. I don't know what this is supposed to be. 
<laughs> yeah, I have no idea what this is. Is it a ferret? Maybe. I don't know. Could be a ferret. Although the ferrets usually have a, a longer nose. So I don't know. <laughs> The gates, iron gates, are always a, a nice touch in a painting. Um, it almost stresses me that we got so much time to create all of our ideas into a... I think it's... You think it's a ferret? Well, the ferrets have a really long nose. At least the ferret I remember. My son used to have a ferret. So very pretty paper. Everybody that came in, um, I'm not sure how to say your name, Exrissa or Rissa. Welcome. You're the Pam Pastel artist, are you not? I love when people uh, great memory Kimberly is Charissa. Is that right? Charissa? I just have to reply to this. It's my sister. Sorry, business. <laughs> um, thank you for remembering me. Teresa, do you are you the uh, pastel artist?
I want to do something more to this. I'm not too sure what yet. So I'm going to leave that. Now, what I was thinking of doing is doing a um, mixed media. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I got a laminator. And when I was on Rosemary's um, channel, she had gotten um, a laminator and she was doing, um, oh, what was it? Uh, napkins, I believe. And she was putting papers in between so it wouldn't stick through. You could actually separate it so you still had a, a napkin to be able to use the, the paper part. So I thought I'd try it with, um, this is watercolor paper. So I put two together. And the reason why I want to try this is I thought, well, if it sticks to watercolor paper on the one side, will that stop it from buckling? <laughs> My brain's always going on something. So I thought, well, I guess I better try it and see what happens. Now, depending on the watercolor, I think if you probably put the watercolor and just a piece of copy paper, not two watercolors, then it would adhere because see, it didn't adhere right there, right on the end, but that's okay. You're not? Okay. There's someone got a similar name to you. Well, welcome anyways. Um, so what I was thinking of doing, <laughs> French Amazon, like, oh, for that, oh, well, that's the only place she can get them. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I was looking at, you know me and leaves, I was looking, while I was looking at Pinterest, I started seeing this, um, I think he's Russian, <laughs> and he's been doing art with leaves. <laughs> Look at this. And I thought, what a great idea. Now, why don't, I'm not going to do all the leaves, but look at this. The sky is all, they're all different types of leaves. So he uses narrow ones and um, this looks like a uh, oak tree leaf and there's all kinds. How do I make links so that they can use your Amazon? Um, I don't, I took the Amazon thing down because they were changing things and it would mean a lot of work for me. So, and I wasn't getting that much anyways. So I decided to uh, just take it down. It was a lot of work, but thanks anyways. Um, but if you, if you want to, I did put up a PayPal me on my studio pay or on my, um, channel page if you'd like just to sponsor me that would be great and um or you can join the membership if you're interested some people don't want the membership um and they just want to um support my channel and if you do that you can do it through uh paypal me it's the easiest way Eileen, Eileen, you're getting testy. So I thought we could do some watercolor, acrylic, and some leaves. <laughs> Try it. 
We'll just make up some kind of, um, I don't know, landscape to see if this works too. If it does, that'll be great because then you don't have to tape them down. So I went out and I did find these are, you want a leaf that is fairly thick and some leaves decay right away and then other leaves can last all winter and they're still pretty well um this is almost feels leathery and it's a um magnolia leaf so if you you could go find your magnolia leaves now this wasn't pressed i just got it this morning off the lawn but it is best to press them and fully dry them before you um, use them. And then my neighbor has a ginkgo tree and these are ginkgo leaves. Now I was playing with these on the weekend and using some paint and stuff and ink, but these are fantastic to be like, this could be anything. Do you see a mermaid tail here? <laughs> or how about, the dress of something, little fairy dress. Um, could we do the butterfly? Okay, I'll show you something that I saw. There's this guy that does these. Wait a minute, I'll get a, okay, here's one I pressed. It's not fully dry yet, but it's almost. Let's see. Get a cutting mat. And the ginkgo leaves are, are, there's many sizes, there's different. Some of them have this little cut indent right here. So with this, um, I think he's like 90, some odd years old and he paints them and what he does did I put my see I cleaned my oh there it is <laughs> I cleaned my desk and everything and now I can't find anything so he took a, an exacto knife and these are fairly sturdy leaves like they're leathery too and they last forever so if you see that there's almost a um veining that goes down the sides of this leaf. See that? So if you cut that with an X-Acto knife, hopefully I can do this. This is a real long one. And those are the antennas. Separate them. And there you got the antennas. So you just have to um, put something in between them while they dry a little more. <laughs> Did I? Oh, my God. Isn't that cool? So you could actually get little beads and put on both sides of this once this is dry. And that could be um, for googly eyes, Colleen. <laughs> Small googly eyes. And then they paint them and they're moths. Isn't that an awesome leaf? You could use it for so many different things. So I've, I, I kind of, well, I got some ideas for these. Yeah. So look at your leaves and see what you can do with them.
So I got some more leaves here. So we could make a watercolor background. aside for a minute. So let's make a sky and maybe, I don't know. Big brush. And I'm just going to do a wet on wet. This is going to be interesting to see if this works on this paper. We'll do a cloudy, maybe cloudy day. And it's still bulking up a bit. Maybe it needs it heavier, but I don't think it'll warp as much. I'll let that I think I'm gonna have to tape it anyways. All right, and then the tissues. I'll roll it up. And then let's Do some clouds. I'm just going to wipe the edge here. We'll see. See if it. I see it's still warping a bit, but I think I needed. To, let's see what it does on the back. Is it going through? It'll keep the water on your paper longer. It's worth a try. Okay, I'm gonna dry it so I can tape it onto my. I think it flattens more, goes back down. to try though. You gotta try things. See if they work or not. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to put some tape down on it. Joshua, hi. Oh, yes, better. Make that a little straighter. That was crazy. So we could do what? What kind of scene do you want? There. Uh, hey, Gail. Let's put... A snowman using a giant leaf as a sleigh. <laughs> You want a snow scene already? I can use the white of the page. Let's see. a little bit of color now let's see what we got yeah. so I did pick 
these are um, the magnolia. These are beech. So you could do like, depending on how big your leaves are. Or you could cut them down if you wanted to. So you can just paste them down. Or you could take some ink and ink the, the um, veining on these. Would be another cool thing to do. And let's get a good one. These oak, you can put, just snip that off, snip the bottom part off, and there you have a, Map me here. Gel, maybe. So you could paint these too if you wanted to. Let's see what we can get for. Here's a, a real rough one. I like how you can see through it. Kind of looks like a tree losing its leaves. You could also cut up the stem. Take more out. You just have to play with stuff to see what you can <laughs> come up with. That's what I like doing. That's why my place, my uh, studio was in such a state <laughs> yesterday. Because I was playing with so many different types of media. <laughs> I had beads out. I had fabric out. <laughs> Crazy. I want to get this down uh, a fair amount, as much as I can. If some stick up, I can't see why that would be a problem. It'd be kind of cool. It's like 3D. So let's put this one here. If it's crinkly, it's crinkly. something to play. <laughs> I'm just going to if I can get this down a little bit. Now I'm not worried about doing the matte medium on the background of, of the um, sky. 
because I'm going to use crap. I'm going to use either craft paint or acrylic on top of this. So it's a mixture of different paints. Just kind of have to play with it, get it stuck down. And this will protect the leaf too, makes it more leathery even. You could paint on top of this if you wanted to also. All right, so then let's use one of these. Let's see, what could we do with this? It could be a pack of bush along the snow. You just kind of have to Look at it, see what, uh, see what the shape reminds you of, this way I look at it. And you never know how it's going to turn out unless you try. I guess that's not going to. I have to cut that. I won't lay it flat. There. So a little bush, evergreen. You could make it more primitive looking too of a painting. Let's see. I suppose you could hot glue them too. If you, once they're they're dried flat, they're easier to do. These weren't weren't dried, so they're a little harder to put on. Let's see if I have any dried ones. Okay, so here's some that I had from when I did my um, jelly printing with them. I kept some. So they're still green. Let's see. Maybe we could put this one here. better that way. I'll stick this one on. Back in there. I'm 
Is this one? Could use that way too. Or this this might look like a nice maple tree actually. Background. Okay, let's see what else. We have some of these little guys. They could have gone in the background or maybe along here as or just we can go over these um, after they're the matte medium is dry and then just add stuff. Let's keep those just in case we add something else. There's this here. Um, let's see what else we got here. Ah, these make great trees. That's from the smoke bush. So we could use bits of it. I'm going to have to get more of that next year. They, I've used this for making um, vines on a wall. Um trees, feathers, all kinds of stuff. So this would probably look like some brush. In there, maybe. Yeah, they dried really nice, this smoke bush stuff. I really like them. You could do all kinds of stuff with these. And it didn't take long for them to dry either. So I just put them between parchment paper and then put a book over it. Then we got, we also have Queen's Anne's Lace. You could cut those in half. Let's see. What happens?
some more overlap things. Looks good. Once the matte medium dries, it, it's clear, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's dry it. Uh, you should do that to old people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a neat idea, Eileen. Anything's possible. It's not totally dry, but it's good for now. Now, some stuff out of the way. Now, the big thing about what the scene's going to be um, will 
give you how the dimension, like, um, how can I explain this? The perspective that you're going to make will depend on how you um, associate things that you know, like a person, the size of a person or animal or whatever, rogue house, will will tell you if this is up front, very big, or very small. So if I were to think, I had um, there they are. I guess I could, I could draw a little house and I'll show you. Just cut notes and paper. So you could have a small house. This tree's fairly big, but I would probably have it bigger. Or a town. So I think you'd want a fairly big house here. Could have a road coming up through here too. It also depends on how you would want to have. You probably would have had to have done the back, the hills before you lay down this. See, this is all experimenting. <laughs> what else could I do here? think any suggestions they need snow they look like igloos <laughs> okay let's just make these trees i guess well so we'll have to use acrylic paint now i mean i'm gonna be happy um My fingers. Um, yes, we'll put snow on it. Let's see. I think there needs to be some hills defined, some so so some shadowed areas and snow like highlights too. So, 
think we'll use this one. This is called Bungalow Blue. And some dark color trees, some white. And a paintbrush. All right. Now, let's see. I think I want to, uh, some glazing fluid. Get it out. Is this glazing fluid? No, this is matte medium. This is glazing medium. All right. So we want to define where their hills and stuff are. So some shadowed areas. So in anywhere where the trunks are, the snow will have a shadowed area around it, this trunk. I like to use a purple, purpley blue for shadows. I find it a little more realistic looking. So it should be a little darker around than this area because of the, all the trees and everything. Green there. And now we need to do some hills or something. Let's put area. In here, probably.
Okay, so I'll have to dry that. <laughs> Maybe it's um 1977 when you got snow. <laughs> Eileen. <laughs> Blowing in the wind in a snowy day in Florida. <laughs> some bright whites. So anywhere where there's a high point here, I'm just going to put a, a bit of white. So where the, say the wind was blowing, it'll make the drifts. So the snow would kind of creep up. Um, if we had a lot of snow, you'd see the kind of mounting up onto the side of the bushes and stuff.
All right. Let's see. Um, let me get in here. All right, let's put a little hmm, person walking maybe up the hill. So the easiest thing to do, oh, let's put it in white first and then we can change it with color if we want. I think I'm going to put the person here. Now, how big should it be? These are big trees, so you won't be able to see it. Log. <laughs> we can go on with Poscas and fix that up. Okay, so Poscas. Should be able to do on it. Now you can either let's try. I wonder if we should try white or black. <laughs> Yellow snow. Why not? <laughs> Trying to be uh, authentic, realistic. 
I'm just going along the veining of this bush. This is when you can kind of go more into the um, illustrative side of things. Um, what's that? There, well, there's quite a few artists that do this. They make the shape of a tree, the outside shape colored in, and then they just do a very simple line work. It doesn't really make sense to the tree, but it's more stylish, I guess stylized um, look of a tree. Depends what, you know, what look you want. I'm just following the lines on the leaves. Do this one in black. Uh, and then we can put no one. On the branches. The why of the branch, there's snow. Um, let's see, I'll do that. This one here, this could be hmm, some kind of pine. <laughs> some kind of pine. I'm trying to think, how would I do that? The snow's on there.
No, that doesn't look great. Don't like that. Does need something, but I think I'm gonna do dark the trunk. Get the maple that we got an early snowfall. <laughs> I know I'll put, make this trunk bigger. And we'll bring it up here. So it looks like it lost some of the leaves, but not all of them. There. Now, I could do more trees. I think light, Maybe brown. in the background. Should have done these before, but I wasn't sure what I was doing.
actually think a smaller brush. Where did all my brushes go? See, I can't find anything. Hmm. Script liner, where did it go? In the back here. trees. Types of trees, I guess they should be darker. Or I can make this one, make this one a little lighter, I guess. You know, I'm mumbling. This was too dark. Doing this backwards, but I should have done this before I put the leaves on. Do as I say, not as I do, basically.
rough brushes. Right. You can take a sponge and just tap here and there because you won't see all the um, twigs really. Some really light brown, watery, maybe some that's still too big, too big. I was going to put tough grass, but being the size of the dog, you probably wouldn't see it. <laughs> Right. All right. I think that's it for this one. Sometimes I just leave them when I'm not sure what else to do. I don't push it. I just put it aside and then maybe tomorrow or a couple days I'll go back and take a look at it and add stuff to it. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Winter's day. <laughs> Big trees. Who knows what they are. <laughs> but mixed media. Big time. I'm going to leave this on because I might go back to it or I'm not sure. Um, there's so much you can do with these. You could add texture paste to it. I just like to experiment with stuff. Especially with mixed media because <laughs> there's so many things you can do with it. You get an idea in your head and you have to try it to see if it'll work or not. And I'll put that aside. Um, I've also seen people use these leaves and they actually draw on them. Like that you can take a, a pen and doodle on them. So you can, um, if you like to doodle, this is kind of cool. You just go between the lines or the veining. And then you can uh, glue them down. Or I've seen some people actually frame them. The 
it's best to find uh, the flat ones though, or flatten them first. I've seen people cut them out with an exacto knife, different shapes. If you like doodling, it's kind of cool. I like, or if you get them flat too, what you, I've seen people do is put them in the, in a laminator after they're done. Um, they have to be really flat though. But you can get some really awesome shaped leaves. Um, Yeah, they're fun. You just kind of have to look at them, see what you see in them. <laughs> Here's what I see in this one. Um, let's see, is that another one of those? Did you press the leaves through the big shot to plant? Uh, no, I didn't, but you probably could. Um, let's see. It would flatten them. Could be a fish. <laughs> Could do that and then take. <laughs> There's a fish. Here's one of those little leaves. There's your the little fin where you get um, That could be also, uh, let's see. What else could we make out of these guys? Just have to think.
little bird. cute pudgy little bird <laughs> you can pull there's so many things you can do with these there's so much fun if this one all you'd have to do is paint the dots you could bake you can do all kinds of designs on these with Posca uh, markers, all kinds. And then just glue them or you could make them into pins too. You see a hedgehog? What on this one? Yeah, you can do a hedgehog too, easily. <laughs> They're fun to do. Depending on the, you know, the shape of the leaf. You can make people, fairies, be wings. This one's an odd shape. Porcupine. You just turn them around and see what you can. This looks like a cape to me. You'd have, I don't know, the head in here. The legs down here. It's a windy day. They're walking. Maybe they have hat on. Their wind, <laughs> their cape is blowing in the wind. <laughs> I think it was leaf leaf art or something like that. And there's some really neat things, and you just have to play, play with it. I missed it. Did you press the? Oh, I already read that. No, but yeah, you can press them. I don't know how much they would straighten out. Let's see.
see if this straightens out or not. I know they will if they're, um, I might have to put an extra bit on, on it, really squish it. Maybe. Well, it did a little bit. Let's see if I put more paper on it, what it does. A little flatter. Still got a little bit of wrinkling though. Let's see if we can do this one. flattened a bit. It's not perfect, but I would probably um, put them under books myself. It would be easier. But yeah. It's a good idea to, if you, that's if you like this type of thing, but it would look cool for journals. Like, um, I know a lot of you girls are doing themed stuff. So a nature journal or I think you're doing the apothecary. It would be kind of cool to have pressed leaves in your apothecary book. Flowers, that type of thing. So I think that's it for me right now. I can hear the dogs upstairs whining. Try and uh, try it out. If you've kept any of the uh, leaves that you've already um, did painting on or jelly plated with, they're probably preserved. <laughs> it's just a few ideas for you to play with. You never know. And if you think up some things you can do with them, Leave a message in the comments. I'd like to know. All right, everybody. So uh, we'll let you go and we'll see you next Thursday. So have a fantastic weekend and I will see you on the internet somewhere. Stay creative, everybody.